going on everyone leo here um i was trying to connect my video camera so you can see my face as opposed to just my screen but i'm not sure what's going on with uh, facebook servers where it wasn't working um let me know if you can hear me and let me see if i can open another window so i can check who's joining and uh, Let's see if there's there are any questions apologize of the switching of, of windows if i'm going to be doing that but um if you can hear me let me know and let me know where you're joining from today i'm going to be talking about how to optimize google my business in about 10 steps i think it's going to be more like nine steps um and this is so that uh you can leverage this tool that is free Right, so that your business can be found online by more of customers. This mostly is, um, it's, it's, it's a tool that is free and that can serve those businesses that are really serious about providing services to local consumers, right? And that depend on high visibility when somebody is searching for specific, for your services and product in the local area. Um, this is why it's important, I believe, that for those type of businesses, it, it, it's great to make some time to optimize uh, Google My Business, especially for those businesses that don't have a big online presence, right? That where you basically mostly rely for word of mouth, where are looking to attract more customers, or are looking to um, increase the number of local customers. Or this is great for businesses that are just starting right and they, they really have no presence at all not even from um the local community or neighborhood or even online so this is a great way to get your foot on the door one of those basic fundamental steps to do every small business should do right whenever they serve local your local community in recent years google has rolled out so many different features that benefit business owners that perhaps if you used it in the past, you have been missing out, right? Uh, as a business owner, if, if marketing is not really the role that you apply, right? You're busy with other stuff in your restaurant or, or business, uh, you're not really paying attention to what's going on with features that would allow you to promote your business. Um, and so let's go through some of those stuff that perhaps you didn't know in this video. And again, I'm not monitoring the comments, so if you have any questions, I'll switch back and forward to see if um, there are any questions. So there are many ways you can improve your listings. And today, I'm, again, I'm gonna be sharing 10 or nine, um, depending how long this video goes. But before we get started right with that, I wanna go over real quickly some of the importance uh, and benefits of why every small businesses, every small business serving your local community should be listed on Google My Business. I'm not affiliated to them. They're not paying me to do this. It's just one of those things that is, is a common sense to do as a business owner to get your foot in the door, um, to have a local visibility online, right? Um, just like perhaps having, if you have need to have a brick and mortar store, is is it's just as basic as that, right? Having the brick and mortar uh, location. So some of the benefits that we can talk about is um, that it offers a wealth of business information to Google and local consumers. So for example, if I go looking for um, Fairfield Dentist, um, we'll see that there's a fir actually a, a location here that is called Fairfield Dentist and Orthodontics. So it actually comes up the profile of this location. It is as a very one of those uh, dominant name. Now, you can, as you can see, having their profile right there it provides me a lot of information where I don't need to go and dig in around. Now, why is this so important? Because Google is one of the number one search browser in the world, meaning um, by default, everybody that is online looking for questions, searching for solutions to the problem, the first thing they do most of the time is they're using Google to uh, find those answers, right? To find those solutions to their pain, their problems. So the key is, are you going to be there um, 
and you're gonna be one of the options the customers consumers see first so that you can be the one that solves the problems um, or have the answer to their solution to their problems so provides a wealth of business information now why to Google right obviously it's important to provide it to local consumers but why to Google because again Google is the number one search engine in the world obviously you want Google to understand your business and to um, be able to this provide to Google the facility to display as much information as possible right there on that page without having to struggle too much to go and find it uh, number two right it helps improve the local search presence of your business just like I mentioned here right or the example that I did simply because this business is called Perfil Dentist it's one of the is the very first option that comes up if I do a search for Fairfield Dentist, for example. Uh, it puts your business on Google Maps. So, for example, if I go finding that there was a, my, my refrigerator went out um, about two weeks ago. And one of the things that I wanted to do was to find uh, local appliance repair um, companies here in my area simply to Number one, right, a little bit of educating myself, do our research, um, answer questions if possible. And obviously, if you're not here on Google Maps, um, how am I going to know that you even exist, right? When I'm using Google, um, my phone to be more specific to do that search, right? Just because it's simple, I have it with me all the time. And obviously, um, having the convenience to all, for all these businesses to come up and be able to just dial and start um, inquiring about their services of this business just makes my life so much easier as a consumer that I don't have to be digging around in some other areas, right? I need that pain, that problem solved. I need my refrigerator up and running. It's summertime. I got four boys and they, 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 they need to eat, right? We need to put stuff in there in the refrigerator. Hey Rob, um, thank you for liking the video. Roxanne, thank you for liking the video. Again, I apologize, I'm, I, I forgot my phone over there, so I'm not really sure who's joining. Um, let me know, you know, comment real quick if you can hear me or not. Um, I'm not sure if I can even see my, my comments. Anyways, um, put your business in Google Maps, helps your business come up in voice search results and Google Apps search results. So this is key right here, right? A lot of times, um, you know we are busy i may be walking around somewhere i don't want to stop to look down on my phone uh to do a search or i may be um driving somewhere right well driving is not a good example because we don't want to have a, a mobile device on our hands but what if um i'm walking to somewhere and i don't want to stop to actually uh, look at my phone and, and do a search right i'm in a, i'm in a hurry well a lot of people what they do is they use voice search uh either you're using I, um, you know, Apple Siri device, uh, if either if you're using Siri on the iPhone devices or you're using uh, Google Assistant on Android devices, um, then obviously, right, that, that's very convenient for somebody that isn't, you know, we're all in a hurry nowadays. I just simply pull my phone and, and do a, a voice search saying, hey, find me uh, nearest grocery store on my way home or, hey, find me the uh, plumbers in my area. Uh, so. Having that information there available for Google will help you appear in those type of searches uh, that are being more and more um, popular nowadays. Uh, Google App Search results, right? So it, Android device, Android dominate, I think Android market share is what, 36%? Uh, let's see over here real quick. Android market share, meaning between Android iPhones. Um, so as you can see, Android devices seventy six point zero three percent, and even iOS devices may have Google installed, right? So about eighty percent of users are on Android devices, and most of those have Google App Search results to go and find uh, information. So it definitely helps you come up with those search results. Um, setup is free, quick and easy, right? Um, uh, it, it does obviously t um, takes time. So if your time is very valuable, you do have the money, might as well pay somebody else to do it for you. 
uh, but it's good to invest. Otherwise, right, if you're just starting, you are, don't have a lot of capital and the setup is free, it's easy to, to learn and quick to do. Quick to do. Um, it helps you gain customer insight, right? It, there's, a, there's a section there within the, um, the Google My Business where it lets you see insights, like what are businesses um, typing when they find your business? What are, business, what are consumers typing when they find your business, right? What are the top keywords they, they use to find your business on the search area? Um, so it helps you get customer insight. There's a lot more information that can, can, you can get from there. It helps you track website and traffic and audience. Um, so one of the things that it helps you do is um, it, it, it lets you see the number of clicks people are doing in a month or, or last quarter, last quarter um, from, to go to your website. So it lets you see all that data. Also lets you see how many people requested directions to your location, right? Whenever they find you in the search results or the maps. It lets you see the uh, phone number, how many people click on the, on the phone uh, to call your business, right? So all those stuff is good information to, to understand as a business owner, because the numbers are one of the things that business owners should, we all should um, understand and, and at least try to get more information about it, trying to understand, trying to analyze. Um, it encourages active response to reviews, right? or it encourage and actively respond to reviews, meaning obviously having the Google My Business profile is facilitate for other consumers or for consumers to uh, know that there's a place where they can leave a review, right? It, it, obviously there's so many other ones. There's Facebook, there's Yelp, uh, and, and there's Google My Business, uh, and there are many other ones. So obviously try to take advantage of those. Um, actually, uh, and also it helps you to actually be able to respond to reviews, right? You don't want to leave those reviews alone. You want to be proactive in, in, in interacting with your uh, community. As a small business owner, we are part of a community, so we should be definitely getting back to them as training. So now that I hopefully get you to understand the importance of Google My Business, right? Let's go uh, through the steps of optimizing uh, Google My Business. So step number one, make sure your NAP plus W is accurate. And what I mean by this is your name, right? The name of your business or organization, A for address, P for phone, uh, plus W uh, for website. Um, make sure that is accurate. Something that I like to do is it's, it's set up a, a document, a, a spreadsheet, where I like to put together information that of what I'm going to be using, this information, right? so that I have a master copy of the name that I use, the address, the phone, the, um, the website. So whenever I go to different sites like that allows me to put information about my business or clients that I work with, I have a master copy that I can just simply copy and paste. All right, so the very first stage of knowing how to optimize Google My Business for local search and success is ensuring the basics are Done well. This is one of the very basics, right? Making sure that all of the places where your business is listed obviously has the same similar information. You don't want uh, confusing people, right? You don't want to be confusing Google either, because then you're you won't be showing up as much when people are looking for your services or, or products. Um, for GMB, meaning Google My Business, this means a quick check that your business name, address, and phone number and website is correct and totally up to date and be consistent with other local citations. Other local citations are other websites that provide um, business owners the capacity to um, list your business. So, so like Yelp, LinkedIn, um, um, and, and many other ones, right? And just list, et cetera. Citations can help consumers to find your business. Citations feed Google the information it needs to help rank your business, right? Because you have a much better chance to, for consumers to actually contact your business first as opposed to uh, the chance that, let's say, you know, businesses that are all the way to the bottom may have or businesses that are in number two or three, right? If you are in this area over here, you have a way higher chance for consumers to contact you first so for you to be able to uh, demonstrate and, 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 and capture that information. If your NAP is run on your Google business profile, you're potentially derailing your entire local search accuracy and making it harder for people to find you. 
So check your NAP plus W, meaning name, address, phone number. And this is just an example, right, of what, uh, how that looks on a profile on Google My Business when I do a search. Um, this right here is a name, right here is a website, right here is the address and the phone number. So those are the, the basic four things that is good, important to check. Um, Number two, it allows you to be able to claim your Google My Business short name. So this is something that recently rolled, Google rolled out um, the, the short name situation. And it just makes it easier, so much easier for people to remember, right? Just like with Facebook or Instagram, um, having something like the like this G that page forward slash and then your business name, uh, just so much easier to, to remember. Obviously, it's not like your Facebook page or Instagram page is gonna be the core um, um, platform where you're gonna be sending people to, but it's just one of those things that still helps you remind, remind uh, it still makes it easier for people to remember, it helps with the branding, right? Um, and, and yes, and that's how it works. If your business has multiple locations, you may use the name plus location. So for example, right in a Starbucks situation, they use something like Starbucks, right, the business name. And then they use the location where they are, Canal and Central New York, right? Um, so this is just an idea for businesses to have multiple locations. So if they have a store that is in Fairfield and Sassoon or Fairfield and Vacaville, and they have the same name, right? Well, one could be a store Fairfield, the other one could be a store back of them, right? Very simple, easy to remember. Uh, so claim your short name as soon as possible, it's easy. And why as soon as possible? Well, remember, there's millions and millions of businesses on Google My Business, and so you just wanna be, if you have one of those business names that is very common, then try to get in there um, and get that name, um, so before somebody else takes it, if it's important to you, of course. With this short name, you have the capacity to put up to 32 characters long. Um, you can change it a maximum of three times per year. And this is based on information on a website called Bright Local, where I got this uh, research from. Um, they're very great at providing local um, SEO, right? Meaning helping local businesses to be found um, be discovered online by more customers. And this is just an example of where you will go to set up your short name, right? Google My Business on the info section. Um, so if you scroll down, you'll find the ad profile short name. Uh, all you have to do is click on the little pens, pencil right here and, and, and be done with that. All right, so step three, write the perfect business description. Well, don't worry so much about the perfect, right? This is something you can work over time, especially if you're just starting, you get starting to learn your, um, your customers, you're trying to understand the business model you wanna approach. Um, the, the key right here is just to start with the description, right? Writing a paper first or writing on, write it on a spreadsheet that I mentioned, I, which I can send you a copy if you're interested on the, on the template of a spreadsheet that I use. Uh, write it on that so that you can have a, a hard copy and you can modify uh, over and over as you need to. But you can use up to, seven, you can have up to 750 characters on that description. Um, in that description, you should obviously inscribe, describe, provide information to describe your business. Um, it should reference things like, it should not reference things like sales or promotion, right? This is just a section that you should use to create awareness or educate um, consumers of what your business is about or uh, what services it provides. You can include a phone number and email address. Um, it does not allow you to put a URL so if you try to put your website information there, it will, it will tell you that you cannot do that. But you can definitely put your number, email address, and um, not sure about the address specifically. Uh, pick one or two keywords to build your description around and ensure that search phrases appear early in the text. What I mean by this is that you, you know if you do, um, I don't know, auto detailing, right? Use those keywords of the services that you use, right? Auto detailing. Uh, keep your car looking shine and, 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 and like new, uh, keep it looking like new, right? Uh, those type of keywords are what you do, that's what I mean by that. Um, now, also by keyword, uh, it's great, it's very important to include the location, so obviously, right, uh, from uh, auto detailing, uh, providing services in Fairfield and areas around it, or mobile auto detailing in Fairfield, uh, or if you do county-wide, right, in Solano County, or if you do Bay Area, so, 
you know, those type of keywords and based on the locations uh, are important to use. Now you can go back and edit this, edit this information, the description as many times as possible, as, as many times as you want. So don't stress too much about getting it right the first time, right? This is something that especially new business owners um, will go back and, and, and analyze when they don't really understand what, uh, what the model is of their business. So number four, choose an appropriate category and subcategory. This is very important because it's what, um, uh, category is basically what allows you to choose, uh, it plays an important role because it tells Google which searches your business could be relevant for. Right? I have an example where I was helping it out of detail in Fairfield and one of the, the category that we're using was cosmetic. Now, I don't know what the situation was of putting cosmetic. It could be that back then, right, when that was created, uh, out of detailing did, was, was not part of, or was none of the options for categories. I don't know what the situation was. However, um, cosmetic, I, I was, I got a chance, you know, once I got access to the Google My Business back, to, uh, back office tool, I was able to see that <clears throat> that business was appearing in a lot of searches related to cosmetics. Um, it, it had nothing to do really with out of detailing, right? So it's obviously that confuses consumers and it confuses Google. Um, so make sure that your business category is, is relevant to what you do. Uh, so for example, if your primary category is pizza restaurant, Google will show your business in local searches or may show your business in local searches. People who are searching for restaurants, Italian restaurants or pizza in the area. In many instances, there are it's not in a in single standout choice. So for example, if your business provide multiple services like a law firm, for example, right? A law firm may practice several areas. Um, in that situation, what business owners should do is uh, the, the, is, is used as a role, right? That whatever category is the most important to your business, whatever category opens up to other business opportunity or whatever category is your bread, um, your bread and butter, then obviously use that, uh, that category, right? Very simple, common sense. Um, so hopefully that helps to answer that question because I'm, I'm, I'm sure people will, will have that uh, questions like that. Well, like what, what do we do if, if there's, you know, there's so many areas that we, focus on our business or many services that we focus on our business, then obviously use the bread and uh, butter category as the primary one. Categories should be specific. I already talked about that. Secondary category. So you, you can add more than one category, right? And it's important to provide those because it, adds inform it, it, it provides information to Google and local consumers of additional services that you may offer. So for example, here I have a Mexican restaurant is the primary op uh, category, but then obviously there are restaurants. You, I can even go add family restaurant. I can even add catering if you do catering, okay? Uh, step number five, upload amazing photos. So with Google My Business, you have options to upload photos or images and even videos. You can add interior and exterior shots, and those are um, if you go to Google My Business, it tells you right right there the categories that you will be uploading the different um, photos. So for example, by owner, by customers, a 360 video, uh, a video, um, a 360 photo, an exterior, an interior, right, food and drinks. Um, you can see the different categories that you can do. Your, custom, your customers can also upload images. As a matter of fact, it, you know, it, it's great to encourage customers to upload images because that con content um, that it helps your business, um, it helps your business be visible, but also have consumers be attractive, right? Because obviously for like a restaurant, a good content for restaurants is the food, of course, right? If the food is good. And obviously having a lot of people um, assisting with that, having your customers helping with that, it just makes your job so much easier. So if you can find a way to encourage consumers to upload images, that would be great. Um, reviews with images are very important for the local search ranking factor, meaning very important for your business to be visible in the top um, top uh, results when somebody's looking for your services or products. 
uh, concealer and courageous your customers yeah, I already talked about that <clears throat> and again this is just an image with um, a sample of how it would look like right? if you go to photos once you log in um, and then you'll see the different photos that you have there uh, and the different sections or where you can upload it photos specifically to each section step six generate monitor and response to reviews very important I, I, I often see a lot of businesses small businesses local businesses that do not respond to reviews um, it just that's just basically doesn't allow you to um, connect to your customers right um, how what do you think you will, it will how, how, how would you personally feel of two separate businesses one that okay the food is, is good right is good and um, uh, but you know, you don't really feel like uh, very welcome or, or you don't really feel like this is a, a location where uh, you feel like you have good friends in there. Or what if you have another restaurant that you like the food, right? Um, and, and on top of that, I have very good uh, relationship with the staff, with the owners. Um, and obviously, I will, I will rather just to go to the other place that has very similar uh, great food as the other one, but this other one because obviously it makes me feel like I'm coming to the house of my friend or family Obviously, I will be there more often than the other one probably Or I'll be there all the time as opposed to going to the other one. So that's a similar uh, effect that it, uh, reviews may have right responding to reviews is basically allows you to uh, connect, uh, establish relationships um, importance of reviews they help influence the um, the purchase process right because obviously the more reviews you have the higher chance you have for customers to come and try you out For the first time uh, local consumers will read an average of 10 online reviews Before they feel they are able to trust a local business and this is based on again a study that I found in bright local which is a, a platform a website that provides a lot of services to small local business owners uh, so very reputable company it, it influences your business being seen by more local customers right and consumers will visit first businesses with higher reviews so how do we generate, generate more reviews you know probably you you're asking yourself okay leo that, that's you know you've got some good points to reference on the importance of reviews how, how do i get more um so some consumers will naturally leave a review right either good or bad they will they will just basically do them themselves without being asked because that's the nature uh, they like to share information other others will will be more proactive if you if we actually can ask them right to to provide reviews so ask request reviews it's okay to request reviews don't be pushy uh, but yeah request reviews uh, plenty of ways available for you to automate the review request process okay Um, have, a, have a designated person or persons within our organization to monitor and respond reviews, right? This is very important, again, uh, because it allows the, the, the consumers know that there are real people behind leaving a review that actually matters to your organization to listen to their feedback, that, um, that it makes them feel like their opinion actually counts, right? Um, and, and, and it helps you you know, obviously, um, uh, it helps you to answer questions that is not just to that person, or, or uh, it lets you address concerns not just to that person that left the review, but many other ones that are, you know, that check review for your business. So <laughs> it, it does great overall. Even responding to negative reviews is, is something that small businesses should practice. All right, step seven use, all right, only just for the uh, sirens there in the back. Step number seven, use Google Post to increase visibility of your business. So Google Post is something, again, that Google is pushing for, right? They, they understand, they, they, they understand, they see the potential of, of being social. And so they come up with Google, Google Post to basically be, uh, be another um, factor of influence and help out small businesses just like with Instagram or Facebook or any of those platforms, right? That are social already. Um, the, uh, ha having this post here is basically is having like tiny blog posts um, or, or having a place where you can put content related to your business. 
Uh, it can be used to give short, short news updates, share an offer, all these details of an upcoming event and showcase your product. Uh, this is an, ex an example here for this place right here in La Costa, right? Uh, this is a great example of um, where you'll find uh, the post that they, 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 they do. And how do you create a post, you may ask? Well, once you look into Google My Business, right, you go to post section, and then you'll see the different options that you have available. You want to add, add, add an update, right, provide news to your community. Do you want to add events, an offer, you have an offer, right? Do you have products you want to promote uh, or let your community know about? Step eight, build up a good database of information using Google Q&A. So q and A is basically the Q question and answer feature that Google has. Um, and this basically, uh, this is something that I have not leveraged, but it was, when I was doing my research to put this together, uh, I saw the potential of this. It basically light up um, ideas that how I can leverage this information, you know, for my clients or even for my own business um, because of this situation, right? It gives consumers a well, um, it allows business, business owners are allowed to ask and answer questions about your location. So what are those answers in question, or are the, what are those answers that you constantly get from consumers, right? When they first um, uh, want to do business with you. That's very important because then you see that there's uh, information that, that will help out others understand about your business. If, if a lot of consumers are asking you this, when they wanna do business with you or learn more about your business, Imagine all the other people that have been asked you this or that will find you in the future if by, by having this information in the Q&A section up front, it will obviously cut down on, on having to answer the same questions over and over again. Um, it gives consumers the opportunity to ask questions about a local business. It gives search users and local consumers additional information about a business. Um, so aim to respond with an answer promptly, right? If you're the business owner, uh, make sure the information that you provide when answering questions, obviously that make sure they're useful, right? The, don't just uh, reply to the question with just a simple no and yes, right? If it makes sense to provide additional information, do it. Um, provide something that is helpful. Uh, and obviously make sure it's accurate with your, you're accurate with your response because simply that stays there, right? Whatever you respond with, it stays there online um, and if you know accurate with that information, well, that's just your reputation there. That's your business reputation in there on the line. Um, step number, I skipped one, my bad. Step number nine, investigate Google My Business features specific to your industry and use them. So uh, a lot of the times, well, Google obviously keeps putting money into this and, and researching and developing. So it's good to stay, um, Sort of on the look of what's going on, right? Especially if you are a local business and 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 and, and, and do take advantage of this uh, a feature or tool. Um, it's good to see what sort of industry you are and what new you know what news uh, features Google My Business may be running out for. So, for example, hotels have an entirely different knowledge panel um, when they come up on the search results. So, for example, hotels near me. Um, well, this is not the knowledge panel, but let's say I want to research Hampton in. Oh, let's see, America Best, America Best, Fairfield. As you can see, right, you have a book a room section. You have the ability, ability, uh, checkability. Uh, well, this is an ad for uh, from Google. Uh, but you can see you can add uh, the features that you have there, amenities. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's 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 a little bit different from, uh, or it's different from uh, other businesses. Uh, restaurants, for example, you have the ability to uh, add a link to your menu. Um, most individual businesses can also upload product and services details. Uh, Appointments-based businesses can use a book button on and connect with many online booking services. Um, service area businesses can hide their address on Google My Business and set a service area instead. Obviously, I, my, my recommendation to this specific uh, section right here would be that one of the most important factors that for you to having 
the opportunity to come up on the top of the search results is distance. So if Google understand that you are close and you have very uh, good business reviews, um, you're gonna be one of the top um, suggestions, right, from Google to that user, or to that consumer. Um, and so if you have a service area business, I understand, right, most of you probably working from home. I understand the concern of actually having your home address showing up, right? Um, but just just know that, right, that, that, that the more specific you are to Google to understand where you are located, um, the more it's gonna help to understand how close you are to that user and be able to be one of the top suggestions, right? In conclusion for today, knowing how to optimize Google My Business packs plenty of benefits for local business owners. It helps you increase local search visibility. Uh, it helps you obviously gather more reviews because it's there available. Um, it provides enhanced information for local consumers, right? Um, and uploading recent images and published machine posts and responding to reviews is something that needs to occur on a regular basis for any small business. If you are truly, if you truly want to unlock the power of Google My Business. So that's all for today. Hope you got a great, a lot of value on this, right? Obviously, if you have been around and you have, um, you have this already in place, Obviously, right, you probably would have stayed there this, this long in the, in the video. Most of you that um, watch the whole video is probably because you do not have this in place and want to learn more. For those of you, um, if you want this guide that I put together, uh, send me a message, right? Or, or depending on when you're watching this, click the link below or go to my website, digitaltrack.co, send me an email um, if you want a copy of this. And I can definitely send it to you. And um, yeah, let me know if you have any other questions. If you like this information, please like it. Subscribe if you are watching this on YouTube or, or if you're watching this on Facebook, please like the page. All right, have a good one.